sort of raises the question about whether it's really intelligent. Is this a form of general intelligence? Well, I went into a bed in 2017 um, about this very question, about whether we would reset, where we get to general intelligence by the year 2020. Well, it's come and gone. I lost the bet. But the question is now, is ChatGPT a form of artificial general intelligence? Okay, so why should we care about AI uh, and ChatGPT? Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it, it may not necessarily be deplacing jobs right at this moment. Um, but it's not too far from doing so. If not ChatGPT, there'll be other products coming out, other systems which will be using the same kinds of technologies and training mechanisms to be able to target specific jobs. Lawyers, doctors, pretty much a whole raft of different professions which involve treatment of information, um, or purely information, will be potentially automated uh, or be able to be replicated by these kinds of systems. Or at the very least, it'll dramatically reduce the amount of workload on humans uh, and therefore reduce the amount of people working in those fields. Finally, I'd like to talk about how it is able to do what it's doing. How I think it's able to do what it's doing, I should say. Um, it wasn't necessarily obvious that simply pumping a whole lot of text into a learning algorithm is going to create an intelligence out the other side. Why should that even be the case? Well, thinking about this a little bit deeper, language is not simply something used to communicate. Language is sort of the substrate that's used in thought itself. So when people learn, what they're doing is they're taking information from the physical world and they're also taking information that are symbols, uh, language symbols, typically from their parents or the people around them, and applying those symbols to the objects around them. So they're creating a linkage. And, you know, ob obviously we've got different languages around the world, so the symbols are not necessarily consistent around the world. But the idea of being able to have a symbol for a particular concept or a particular type of object, that is really the core of what language is. And so language is essentially distilling down the abstract concepts we need to be able to operate in the world and be able to reason. So language isn't just a, a store of information, but actually a semantic structure which can be used in order to reason. And if you take that language and then you train a second system with it, um, which doesn't have those experiences, then potentially there's a shadow of that information or that reasoning capability in the new system, which is in this case ChatGPT. It doesn't mean that ChatGPT really understands it from a perspective that it knows what a boat looks like, for example, when you talk about a boat. It's just the word. Although it does have the structure around it to understand that boats float and they have holes and basically all the details about boats. Can How is a boat different to a car? A boat and a car are different in several ways. Mode of transportation, a boat is designed for transportation on water, while a car is designed for transportation on roads. Propulsion, boats are typically powered by an engine and a propeller, while cars are powered by an internal combustion engine or an electric motor. Things around boats and concepts around boats. So, you know, for example, it'll say that a boat floats, even though it doesn't know what fo floating is, or boats. It understands the structure much like, like scientists, for example, understand protons and electrons, but they've never been observed. You can't observe protons and electrons and neutrons all individually. It's just not possible from the human eye. You can conceive of these things because we've created the intellectual supports and the language supports for these concepts, and you can actually do mathematics with them. So mathematics is another kind of language, it's just not English. So these kinds of language structures are able to represent things in abstraction even though we can't see them. And I think this is kind of what ChatGPT is doing. It's representing things in the physical world that we can see, but it's treating it more like the protons and the electrons. 
It's created an abstraction for them and is able to treat the abstractions in a logical manner to be able to say true things about them. The truth is, it is creating the responses one word at a time. So what it does is it predicts the next word is, that is the most probable or the most plausible. Um, and then after it adds that word, then it figures out the word after that, and the word after that, and the word after that. There's a mechanical kind of process going on which constructs the sentences which it returns. So that's the mechanics of it. So that kind of mechanics could also be happening with us as well. So as I'm speaking here, that kind of process could be going on on my own here. You don't actually have access to that particular process. But there's no reason to think, in fact there's no reason not to think, there's anything magical happening inside human heads. It's basically just a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of neurons talking to each other by synapses. And in a computer, basically the same thing is happening, slightly different because uh, basically we're using GPUs. But the, the, the model inside computers uh, that are running AI is essentially the same kind of process that occurs in human brains. Now I'd like to clarify, this doesn't mean that it's a one-to-one -one analogy. You, you can't say that you know, the, you know, what's going on inside our brains is exactly what's happening inside the, the machines that are running ChatGPT. And there are definitely different, uh, there are definitely limitations in terms of the, the kinds of thought process and reasoning that's currently happening with ChatGPT. And it is very, very early days with this kind of technology. It is the first instance that I think we've really got to the point where you can honestly call it some kind of artificial intelligence or general artificial intelligence. But it's not the end of the road. In fact, it's just the beginning of the road. And this is why I think, you know, at the moment we're going to be just doing, uh, it's going to be very controlled. We're going to keep it so that it doesn't have access to the internet. Um, there's going to be various ethical controls around it um, and moderation, which is another feature of ChatGPT. Um, but these features are probably going to be eroded over time. These ethical features are going to be eroded because they get in the way of its utility. And so... Corporations are going to want to create systems which can actually be used for their business purposes, um, things that won't necessarily be beneficial to the users. This technology is not going to end at ChatGPT. It's going to become more and more complicated, more and more capable, and eventually we're going to see it replacing a great number of jobs.